Okay, the war and the branch of service that you served in. Sorry. The war that you served in. World War Two. World War Two. World War Two. And the branch of service that you served. Um. Why one C temporary? That's a uh, yeoman or secretary. Uh, that's the highest uh, uh, rank, rank, uh, and it was a temporary because it was just for the war, the emergency, USNR. Mm -hmm. Where did you get trained? I was trained in the uh, Agricultural Mechanical College in Stillwater, Oklahoma, and. Uh, I was in a 60-day a, a group, but at, at the end of 30 days, they asked me if I would work in the office. Uh, the Chief King was revising the Navy manual, and uh, I was asked to, as a typist, I was asked to work uh, in the office. And uh, there was another uh, young uh, lady that was working in the office, and her name was June. Mees, M-E-E-S, and uh, I think her brother was Attorney General when uh, President Kennedy was in office, and she was from the uh, West Coast. She liked her horseback ride. Oh, <laughs> After your training, where did you go? I went to, um, I was assigned to Washington, D.C., the Bureau of Supplies and Accounts. Cost Inspection Service. Uh, it was um, reviewing the, uh, they were accountants, they were all uh, certified public accountants who uh, reviewed uh, the um, contracts for uh, whatever na uh, the uh, Navy was uh, ordering for, uh, for the prosecution of the war. What type of work did you do? I, I did the typing. I, I, I primarily worked for three officers. One was uh, Lieutenant uh, Madison. I did a lot of dictation for him uh, and, and correspondence. And uh, another was uh, Lieutenant uh, Leviathan. And uh, occasionally for uh, Captain Nolte, I did, I did some work for him, too. But I, I worked for, primarily for those three officers. Once in a great while, I would get a, 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 a civilian who would ask for a stenographer. But mostly, I worked with the officers. How did you enlist? I, asked for a, 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 a paper uh, so that I could enter when I was 20, uh, because you had to be 21. And the waitress, I think, was the only branch that would take anybody that was not 21. And uh, my parent had to sign for me, and I wrote, and they sent me the papers, and, and it was notarized and sent back, and then I had my interview in New York. Where were you living at the time? I was living in Enfield, uh, Connecticut. Um, it was Broadbrook <laughs> <Robert> Road. <laughs> Broadbrook Road. Uh, uh. Why did you join the service? Uh, well, I really, uh, I, 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 I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to. It was. I wanted to join because uh, uh, my relatives came down from New York when uh, Pearl Harbor was struck, and, and they said that uh, we've been hit. Uh, 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 the Japanese have bombed Pearl Harbor, and and uh, well, uh, as an American, I, it was my. I felt it was my duty. Yes. Do you recall your first days in? Pardon? Do you recall your first days in the service, in training? My training was in Oklahoma, Oklahoma uh, mechanic uh, A and M mechanical uh, college. How was that? How was it? Uh, well, it was. Uh, I, I really don't know what to say. That I had a very good. Um, uh, uh, the cooking was very good. It was very, very good. And we used to drill outside, and so when you drill, uh, 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 you you kind of uh, exercise more, and you kind of uh, build up uh, more of an appetite. Uh, but uh, they had a very, very good uh, uh, 
and I don't know what the A and N stands for. A agriculture and Mechanical College, so it, it was uh, an out of agriculture. Uh, I don't know what uh, the area does. Uh, I know they they uh, more like Iowa. They say corn fed, <laughs> they're corn fed, but I don't know about uh, Oklahoma. Uh, we, it was just there a short time, and everything was just uh, everything was very accelerated when you're in the war. Yes. Do you remember your instructors? Do I remember? Oh, I remember I had a Mrs. Uh, or a Miss. I don't know what her name. Sitel. I remember she was uh, she was the one who asked me if I would work in the work in the office. I had I had thirty days, and I said yes. Uh, her name was Sitel, S I T T or S I T E L, Sitel. What war did you serve in? World War II. And, um, do you remember arriving in Washington, D.C.? Do you remember what? Do you remember arriving in Washington, D.C.? Remember arriving? Well, when I left, they told me that I was going to be the mustering officer. And, and uh, uh, I. Uh, uh, I uh, I don't know what to, what to think because as I say I was I was younger than the others but I guess the fact maybe that I was visible I was tall that uh, they would notice me if we had any stops in the uh, we did have a stop somewhere in uh, en route to Washington and 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 uh, the other ways would check and. Uh, uh, about a, a departure, and uh, as a couple of men came up to me, and they said, we've seen a lot of service women, but these are the nicest ones that we have seen. <laughs> so it was really a compliment. Yes. I think we went through Kansas. Mm -hmm. Will you tell me about a couple of your most memorable experiences? Could I tell you what? About your memorable experiences? Memorable experiences? Well, um... Uh, I was asked to uh, review uh, a uh, marine advance base, uh, and uh, it was going through the major cities in the United States, uh, and, and each city someone would be appointed to discuss a, a marine advance base. and, and uh, during war times, the Marines go into a area first, and they set up an advance base, and uh, then the Army moves in and takes over. And uh, at the time, it was just an advance base, but now I know it was for Iwo Jima uh, that they uh, uh, were uh, uh, considering. And uh, the. Uh, they had a very hard time getting in there because the Japanese installations were uh, very well hidden, and, and they and they didn't know you know where they were, and that was very important. And uh, I think how they uh, were able to identify them is because uh, one of the uh, priest residents here had a book on the uh, instamatic camera. And uh, the instamatic camera uh, has more color, and objects are seen by their color. And uh, this probably they use to uh, find where these installations were. If they were a different color, it would register more than on a black and a white uh, uh, a negative or, or picture. So I think that this uh, that that was what was instrumental in in uh, identifying uh, where uh, where these installations were, and uh, they had a picture in the paper later on of uh, the raising of the American flag and on Iwo Jima, and uh, the Marines the Marines raised it, and uh, there was a, a Paiute Indian they said, and his name was Ira I R A. And, and I think he lost his uh, life in, in, in action there. And, and there were other Marines, but uh, they are shown uh, uh, raising, uh, raising the flag. And uh, there was a television program on Iwo Jima uh, in the recent past, and, and they said that both sides, uh, the bodies were really piled up very, very high. Uh, and. Uh, uh, but uh, finally, as I say, I guess uh, 
it was a victory for for the uh, United States. And uh, uh, then uh, I saw a report in the, uh, the paper, and, and it was a very uh, uh, Native American who went with General MacArthur to for the surrender of, of Japanese. Uh, so um, he was very. Uh, I am really proud of, of that the fact that that he was there for the uh, for the surrender uh, of Japan and they surrendered surrender, uh, but uh, it was uh, the uh, it was uh, the victory at, in, in Japan was because of the uh, probably the atom bomb uh, and the devastation was really terrible. Where uh, were you when this was happening? Pardon? Where were you when this was happening? In Where Washington? was I when this occurred? Uh, well, I was in Washington when, uh, but recently I read about the uh, uh, man in, who went with General MacArthur when uh, uh, Japan surrendered. How did it? How did it feel being in Washington, knowing that the war was coming to an end? And knowing that the the war was going to end. Uh, well, they were very happy. The people were dancing on the streets out. I, we had a room on the first or, or second floor, and, and you could see out on the streets. And uh, the people were very happy, and they were dancing. They were dancing on the streets. Uh, I had, uh, as I say, uh, they. Uh, I had. Proud, I had roommates, and and uh, they were. Uh, they were not Catholic, but uh, they knew the rosary. A uh, rosary is a, a Catholic devotion, praying the rosary. And uh, they were talking that there was a block rosary being said in Washington uh, for uh, uh, the war, uh, you know, for the victory in the war. And uh, they, uh, they were uh, undoubtedly of, of English descent because uh, one girl's name was Cornelius. And her maiden name was Cornelia. She married uh, 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 an Irishman afterward, but uh, he was the first convert. Uh, Cor Cornelius was the first convert. Peter, Saint Peter, converted him. He was the first convert to the to the uh, uh, to the Christian faith. And, and that was her name. And and uh, she, uh, they knew the rosary, and she said the rosary. They said, "Did uh, do you, one of them asked you, did you say a rosary?" And she said, "Yes." But I think that's one reason our effort and the prayers of the faithful that uh, brought uh, the end of, of the war. Uh, and uh, my sister-in-law is uh, a, a Methodist, but uh, I, I know she sends the rosary. Uh, the Methodists say the rosary. How did how did you stay in touch with your family? How did I? Uh, well, I used to write. And uh, I, uh, after uh, we were, after a while, they said we, we could have a 72 hour pass to go home. And well, Washington wasn't that far from uh, Connecticut. And uh, I could catch the 430 train out of Washington. And I would get into Hartford at 1130. And uh, uh, a family car would pick me up, and I'd go home for for the weekend, uh, and uh, I would start back Sunday afternoon for Washington and, and for work. And uh, and I had uh, when we first our military training, we had time off, and I went home for a few days, and then I met other ways in New York City because they were from the West Coast and they wanted to see New York, and one was from California, and the other was from. Uh, Portland, Oregon. So they uh, they went to New York, and and I I met them uh, after a few days at home with my family, and with them I went back to Washington uh, to begin service I in Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, then uh, we had uh, we had a vacation too toward the end of the war, and uh, I would go home for for a few days. So uh, it worked out very well. Where did you live in Washington? Washington. I lived on 18th and G Street. 18th and G Street. It was uh, about a block and a half from the White House. And the Blair House is nearby because the Blair House is as if the government had uh, a foreign visitors. They stayed in Blair House, B-L-A-I-R, Blair House. 
uh, and uh, we were in, in that area. Uh, it was a, a, a hotel that, or, or apartment house. It was built for civilian use, but the Navy leased it for three years, and so uh, there was uh, there were eight floors. And one time the elevator broke down, and I lived on the eighth floor, and we had to walk up eight flights. Uh, but then toward the end, uh, when the lease expired, uh, I was on the, I think it was the second floor. You could look out on the street. It wasn't the ground floor, but the floor above the ground floor. Mm -hmm. What did you eat? What did you eat? Did the what did baby... I, what did I eat? Mm -hmm. Um, we had a subsistence allowance, and um, uh, there were some restaurants around. And uh, one day I went into one of the offices, and there was a lieutenant. And he said to me, he says, you know, you can go into the Department of the Interior, and you can get a good breakfast. And uh, I found out where the apartment, Department of the Interior was, and I, I did go there, and I used to get my breakfast there. And uh, it was very good. And... Um, in the Department of Interior, uh, they have uh, uh, paintings of the uh, Indians. Uh, there was a man from Connecticut, and his parents wanted him to be an attorney, and he wanted to paint the Indians. <laughs> so he finished his training to be a lawyer, and he folded up his suitcase, and he went out west, and he painted them. And his paintings are in the Department of the Interior, and it was really very, very interesting. Uh, I asked them one time, my, my sister, when she graduated from high school, they want a trip to uh, Washington. That was their high school trip. And she said somebody took a picture of one of the Indians, and he got mad, and he threw his tomahawk at him. So I, we had a, uh, an Aztec that was working in my office. I said, why did he do that? He was an Aztec from Mexico, and uh, he, he had a, uh, he was a painter, and he was a, uh, had a degree, and he did, uh, was an analyst. It's a good education. And I said, why did he do that? He says, because you catch their spirit. And that's why, why he threw the Ali Tamak. I thought that was a very, a very rather interesting. How did you entertain yourself after work? After work? Well, we worked at 4.30, and uh, we had to um, we had to change our linen. And sometimes we did our own cooking. We had a kitty, and we put in $3 uh, for the month, and, and uh, some of them were very good cooks. And uh, we used to cook in the evening uh, and and uh, prepare our evening meal, and uh, I was I used to change the linen because we had uh, every now and then, it wasn't every day, but at certain days I would I would go downstairs and change all the linen and bring it up for uh, uh, others, and and some did the cooking, and then some of us did the uh, cleaning up after uh, uh, after the meals. Uh, we signed up for uh, a course in Spanish at uh, George Washington University. Uh, I didn't take the final test. Uh, I felt I was good. I didn't think I would pass it because I had four years of French in high school, and uh, it, it was uh, a bit uh, confusing. So I didn't show up for the final test. I was in class every. I was in class, but I didn't go to the final test, uh, and. Uh, it was, uh, oh, we had, sometimes we had programs at Constitution Hall. One time Cecil B. DeMille was there. He's a uh, movie producer. And uh, he had, uh, they were premiering a, 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 a movie that he was uh, the director of. And uh, then one time uh, Jeanette McDonald uh, was uh, there, and uh, she uh, was a, uh, a singer. And sometimes we saw... Uh, Bob Hope and Francis Langford walking down on the street because uh, they uh, did USO, I guess, uh, uh, work. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you're working uh, six days a week and, and 48 hours a week because uh, now uh, in the past the law was that uh, I shouldn't work more than 40 hours, uh, you just kind of want to rest. When your time's up, and we had to share the uh, facility of uh, 
of the, uh, you know, getting cleaned up and washed up and things like that. So there really wasn't very much extra time. Uh, and as with the cooking, we did the cooking, uh, or, or, or in the shopping, yes, for the for the weekends. Mm -hmm. When did your service end? When did my service end? Uh, well, they told me I could leave if I wanted to. Uh, that was in 19. Uh, uh, my my discharge says uh, January 10, 1946. And uh, uh, before that, I, uh, I got the uh, commendation at, at the end of 45 about somebody I could, came to my desk, and of course Japan had uh, surrendered. <coughs> Europe had not yet surrendered. That's VE Day. Uh, but VJ Day was uh, the end of the Japanese uh, involvement in the war. and. Uh, I, uh, the E day probably came sometime in 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 the summertime, but uh, it told me I could leave if I wanted to, so I did. Uh, and we went to New York, and uh, we were uh, sent away from the, from the service. Uh, when I came home, I uh, was sitting at home, and everybody was out working. And I was sitting at home, all alone in the house, and, and I, I, I felt uh, I had to do something. So I called Pratt and Whitney's because uh, the war was still on, except for VJ Day. Uh, Europe had not uh, surrendered. So I called Pratt and Whitney's and I asked them if they could use uh, extra uh, service, and they suggest come in and uh, take a test, and we can use someone. So I went in and I and I took it. Uh, examination and I worked there. Uh, I worked in uh, uh, engineering and I worked in some attorney's office and I worked in the um, another they were they were laying plans for the um, air route to Colombia, South America and, and I worked on that too and uh, I didn't know that I would be using that uh, route in the future for a visit there and I did go down to uh, Colombia in 19 61 and uh, it was uh, it was a nice visit because uh, that was uh, where uh, Columbus landed Columbus landed in around, around that area Dominican Republic and it was it was interesting to see that area and uh, I was uh, it was a uh, he was written up in the Hartford Current. He was a uh, he was building uh, homes for the poor. He was a priest, and he was building homes for the poor. And I just wrote him a letter of appreciation. And uh, I was thinking of joining a, a group here in in Connecticut. And he said, "I would advise you to come down here first. So <laughs> I went, and uh, it was very high. Uh, at the altitude is very high, and they say when you get to Bogota, Colombia, stay in bed for two days. And, and uh, people who are live there permanently should uh, leave there every six months to go to a lower altitude. People who live there develop very broad chest because of the uh, rare, the air oxygen is rare the higher you go. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, I stayed. Uh, I forty days, and uh, I I I just couldn't take it. I thought I might do some uh, a church work down there, missionary work, but uh, I couldn't stand the altitude. So I I, I came back to uh, to Connecticut, and uh, but uh, it, it was very uh, as I say, it was very interesting to see the uh, uh, to see the area, to visit the area. Uh, uh, there were sisters there from Spain, and they said that one of their sisters had to leave the first day. She just couldn't stand the altitude. Uh, Did you? Uh, the Andes are very, very high too. Uh, I think, but uh, okay. Did you I was very interested because um, I traced the origin of the of the people that lived in that area, uh, the natives because uh, I studied the scriptures and in 615 BC 
they said that uh, Babylon was going to attack uh, the town that they lived in, that they should flee. So I think that they went up to Russia, because everybody goes uh, crosses over from Russia to the Galatians down here. But they had uh, many of the, uh, of the groups there have the uh, Israelite habits. They have the Israelite habit. They uh, wear the apron because uh, uh, the uh, oh, what's it, and Samuel or was it Samuel? Not Samuel. Yeah, Samuel wore, wore an apron. His mother made it for him in the in the scriptures, and and they wear the the women do. They wear the aprons. So they have the Israelite. They have the some of them have the Israelites have it, but it's a mixed group. Some of them were Greek, some of them were Israelites, and some of them were the uh, uh, Arameans. Arameans, that's the uh, 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 Aram is called Aram that lived in that area. So I think that that's how they came here, and I don't think they were here more than two thousand years because Columbus discovered America in fourteen ninety two, and it, as they came up around six fifteen. By the time they got here, it would be about 500 years, so 1492 and 500 would be 2,000 years. I think that's the length of the time that they were here. There are a lot of, uh, they have been discovering a lot of arrowheads that date way, way back, but I think they probably carried them over with them because they were a hunting uh, people. This priest that I, uh, I visited for a short time, I talked with, he did carpentry. And he showed me a dining room set that he had uh, uh, made, and it was very, very nicely made. So that was a tray that was in the area uh, at, at the time. So he carried that. Uh, his his people carried it over with them over to hear some of their uh, skills, uh, and uh, they do they do a lot, they do a lot of craft work. Did you ever go back to school? Did I ever go back to school? Did you go back to school? To the to school. Washington, you mean? No. Did you ever take any more classes? Any more classes? Mm -hmm. Oh, I I, uh, I when I uh, left uh, and I was working in the uh, Pratt and Whitney's, I had uh, been accepted to study at St. Joseph College, and uh, I it was March the spring semester of 46 and uh, I came to uh, 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 under the GI Bill of Rights uh, I, I came to uh, the college here and um, I was very impressed because I wanted to go to college when I graduated from high school but my parents uh, couldn't afford to send me and, and uh, I was an honor student uh, when I was in high school and uh, I uh, very impressed because the sisters who were running the college and that's something that because uh, like they didn't want women to be admitted into the accounting profession it was very hard for women to be admitted to the accounting profession so I was very impressed because they had founded the college I worked in the Department of Education for a short time and uh, the man that I worked for uh, Dr. Baer he was active with the sisters here in uh, developing the college. They knew him. This sister that I talked to you, she knew him personally. I worked with him for about two years and then the war broke out and so I went into the uh, uh, service. But I did statistical work there and he showed me how to draw the graphs uh, that went into a report. There was a five-year study of the uh, teaching conditions in Connecticut and uh, uh, I drew the graphs on that, and I did uh, some statistical work in finding medians and quartiles and things like that. Uh, so uh, it was it was very interesting. I, I had been working in one of the industries, and I was earning seven dollars more a week in the industry. But I, I for some reason or other, I wanted to work for the state. <laughs> I got to the state. I didn't earn nearly as much, but it was a very nice experience. Did you join any veterans organizations? No, I didn't uh, because I I, uh, I lived in the country and uh, I I didn't have a car at the time, uh, so uh, I know I I didn't. Uh,
I, I it's a country. Uh, it's uh, it, it, as I say, yeah, you have to have a car if you live out in the country. You just don't get around. If we had to go to religious services on uh, on Sunday, we we had to have a car, and uh, we worked in Hartford, and uh, we would drive in uh, close to twenty miles every day uh, to uh, work. Uh, I worked in Foxes, and I worked in uh, Coast Fat and Firearms. And, uh, and then I worked in the State Department of Education. When I came out of the service, I, uh, I worked through an agency uh, in, in the office doing office work. Uh, and and uh, well, uh, with the uh, infection that I got when I was in the service, uh, I, I passed the social work test. And a doctor wouldn't recommend me because he said I was too nervous because uh, this affects your nervous system. Uh, the the, uh, the Lyme disease or the infections that you get. And, uh, they're writing now about Parkinson's disease. I was reading it, and, and that affects the uh, the entire nervous system. But I had I had typing skills, so I worked uh, through an agency, part time work in the office, and then I took a a full time job in the police department, and uh, I worked there for uh, close to seven years, uh, and. Uh, I was a word processor, a secretary, and stenographer, and uh, I think a stenographer uh, reaches her her zenith as she takes the minutes of meeting. And I used to take the minutes of the meeting when the officers met to discuss uh, patro uh, their uh, patrol uh, uh, duties and, and so forth. So I took the minutes of the meeting, and uh, I also uh, was a word processor, and I did the. A recording on the accident review board for the uh, the uh, uh, officers had a uh, were under a study about uh, they had accidents in their uh, travels. I did those reports. It was interesting. Uh, when I retired, I was I I was just one month before sixty six. I retired, and then I came here. Will you tell me how you got Lyme disease? Well, it was uh, how I got it. I studied about it. I didn't know, as I say. When I was in Washington, uh, I had the fever. And uh, when I went to the uh, doctor's office, he said, we call it cat fever. They didn't know what it was. And uh, he said, we call it cat fever because it was quite common, apparently. It was quite common. But I read about it in the science sections of, of uh, 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 different journals, and uh, uh, they said it was a tick, and that uh, I had microbiology here, and I know that uh, diseases are, are, are sometimes passed on by, by uh, bacteriology, uh, microbiology by ticks. So uh, I studied about it, and uh, I was in, uh, as I say, I had to eyeglasses, and then I had 20-20 vision when I entered the ways and I had, had to get eyeglasses. My pupils were dilated and I was uh, traveling around and uh, I was working with um, a missionary group and I was in one place and the ophthalmologist says that her eyes have not reached their full growth. When she's 40, they will reach their full growth. And uh, this was, I was a little, uh, 20, when I had the problem of the eye infection and uh, then I was in uh, New York State, and I was about 40. And in New York State, if you're applying for a driver's license, you have to uh, apply for a permit, and you have to take the road test. And so uh, I was in the office, and uh, she said, do you wear glasses? And I said, yes. I said, but I don't have them with me, my eyeglasses. And I said, but he said, when I, I reach 40, my eye, I will reach full growth. So uh, she gave me the road test without the eyeglasses, and I had to read signs and things like that uh, that were on a, a, a visual uh, like that. And, and I did. I passed them all. And she says you have 20/20 vision. That was 40. And the ophthalmologist says when she's 40, her eyes will reach their full growth. They haven't reached their full growth. So it took 20 years for that to restore. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there anything? else that you would like to say that we have not covered in this interview? Anything else? Uh.
I don't think so. I'll sign to uh, D.C. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I, I, well, I guess you said what we do for recreation. Uh, the Smithsonian is there, and, and uh, that's very, uh, very educational. And uh, I had, uh, you just didn't have very much time to, to go to a lot of places. But it was very interesting because uh, they had the plane that um, Limber flew across the Atlantic uh, there. And uh, they had a, a, a printed on the head of a pin, in there, and you had to look through uh, like a microscope or something, was the Lord's Prayer. It was printed on the head of a pin. It had a lot of dinosaurs. Uh, their, uh, uh, you know, their skeletal system there. And, and so there, that was very interesting, but uh, I, I just got there once, and I, 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 I just didn't get there uh, anymore. But that, that would be interesting for recreation. And then there was a Pan American building, uh, and I, well, I got there once, uh, and we saw a play, uh, You Can't Take It With You. I don't know if you heard of that play, You Can't Take It With You. Yeah, it's a, it's a <clears throat> it was a, a very nice play, and uh, yeah, that was a, we had a bit of recreation. Sometimes I, it went to the embassies, too. I went to the Iranian. We had a reception at the Iranian embassy, and... Uh, uh, that that was interesting because uh, they uh, have have it's on Massachusetts Avenue, and uh, sometimes when they're coming home from uh, Washington to visit my family in the dining room, you would meet some uh, uh, people from uh, other areas. And when we went to the dining room, I think he was from Egypt, and we sat in another way than I sat at the dining room table uh, with him, and. Uh, he he was interesting, and, and then there was uh, one time on the bus. Uh, 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 I was sitting on the bus in Washington, and, and this gentleman came on, and, and he said, "Do you mind if I sit here?" And I said, "No, it's a, you know." It's, I, I said, "No, I, but it's a public bus. He can sit wherever he wanted to." And uh, he was from Switzerland, and he said that our our language is Swisterlic. Swisterlic. We call it Swisterlic. It's a combination of French. Italian uh, and I guess German. It's uh, and uh, he he thought that the United States was very paternal because they get the jobs <laughs> for people. And well, sometimes it's very very helpful because uh, I I got some jobs through the Connecticut State Employment Agency where I would have been un unemployed otherwise. So uh, it, it, it is beneficial. Uh, but those are those are the little uh, things that. Uh, bring home, you know, what would happen uh, during the service. But uh, it's, uh, I don't know where they get their training. Uh, if they're permanent part, the women, where they get their training, where they go to Annapolis, the men go to Annapolis. And it's, it's historic, and it's very interesting. Uh, New York, uh, for the Army, it's, uh, it's in New York. I forget the name of the place, but I've been by it, uh, and they have a statue of Kosciuszko and... Uh, Pulaski, because uh, they did a lot for uh, the uh, American and the Civil War for American independence, uh, and so they have uh, statues there. But uh, the French did uh, also uh, uh, quite a bit for for American uh, in independence. Uh, no, that's our history. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. I hope I didn't uh, try.